This video is powered by USA Gundam. Visit usagundamstore.com today for all of your gunpla and hobby needs. Hello everyone and welcome to my review on the Yolo Park Bumblebee Movie Earth Mode Optimus Prime. First off, I just want to say that this has been such an amazing building experience. It took me around 40 hours to complete this and the amount of detail, the engineering that went into this is astonishing. The amount of pieces in this, which is just over 750 or so, is incredible. Every part of this kit was constructed unlike anything that I have done so far, and 98% of this or so is undergated, which is amazing. This is an incredible work of art, so with all that said and done, let's get to the review. Kicking the review off here with the head sculpt, as you can see, this is a perfect head sculpt for this Optimus Prime. The amount of detail up in the faceplate, around the eyes, if I got the light just right again, you can see the eyes actually are a clear blue piece in there. So if you wanted to put an LED in here, you definitely could, and they would probably light up a really nice vibrant blue, but the details on them, even though it's very hard to see, is very impressive. Moving around here to the side, you can see the nice ear pieces that, you know, that is Optimus Prime. And in the back here, even more detail, you got that chrome silver looking amazing. And honestly, there's so many pieces that make up the head, which is crazy. So as far as articulation goes for the head, it actually mainly moves off of the neck. So the neck is actually on a ball joint at the base inside the chest. And that's what gets you all of your movement down there. So you can look down, he can kind of look up and side to side. And the head itself is on a C-clip that's clipped into the neck, which gets you a little bit of wiggle waggle there. But there is a gimmick here that allows you to actually make him look up even more. And to do so, we're actually going to take the head off. And as you can see, there's just a ball joint down there and a ball joint here. So here we have the neck the way that it is normally positioned, but there's actually a swivel joint in the neck that allows the neck to separate, which in turn makes Optimus look up even more. Now you can do this as it's connected to the body, but I find it kind of hard to do. So it's a lot easier just to take the head off, do the neck up like this, put it back on, and then he'll be having that really nice upward look. Making our way down from the head, here we have the chest area. This is the area that you've kind of already seen so far, but as you can see from the collar area, it is so packed with detail and honestly every bit of these different shades of colors is a separate part, which is insane. The chest is actually the most part heavy, I believe, of the whole kit and just the chest itself took me about five hours or well, the chest and body took me about five hours to complete which is a long time as you can see here we have all of these intricate mechanical bits in the back this is probably one of the most impressive parts of the kit around here to the side we'll take a better look at the side here in a second when i get the arm off but as you can see, just loaded down with detail. We got some exhaust bits up here in the side. I mean, everything, everywhere you look on this kit is just more detail. As you can kind of see, the, you can see the matrix of leadership up there in the chest. We will actually see that later in the review. We have the little windshield wipers, which are separate pieces, which is amazing all that ab detail and everything down there so in total i mean this is just an immensely detailed piece i just want to take a second to show you guys the full view of what that side of that body looks like that is just so impressive as you can see there are actual die cast metal pieces for the connections on the arms and also what connects the torso to the waist so that is nice that they actually, you know, have some really heavy duty reinforced joints there. So as far as articulation goes for the chest area, the doors do open up, but I'm not going to do that yet. We're going to see that here in a little bit. 
Up here, we actually have these little opening hatches in the back, if I can get it open. And it's on either side and they house these connection ports. I'm really not sure what these are. Uh, maybe there's gonna be an expansion for the kit later or maybe there's just some sort of like missile pods or something like that. But nevertheless, they are opening hatches that can open. Down here, we have one of the most impressive ab crunches that I have seen on a kit at all. Uh, as you can see, the pieces actually move out of the way from each other to create this super, super deep ab crunch. This thing is awesome. And then moving around to the back, with the ab crunch, we actually have a back bend happening at the same time. This spine back here actually acts as a spine should and expands and retracts. And all of these pieces just kind of move out of the way from each other. And it is, it's, it's almost human like the way that it flexes and bends. It's very impressive. And as you can see, all of this nice detail in the back here to make for this really wide aggressive looking back you know this is a very thick optimus prime <laughs> moving to the side to the shoulders and arms here you can see there's some really nice autobot logos here on the shoulder you got the nice silver smoke stacks the door piece here and on the back side you can see there's even more detail up in there down the back of the arm, you can see we have some like heat sink looking bits here. I mean, everywhere you look is just more detail. The side of the arm with all of those exhaust manifolds and springs, coilovers. I mean, just anything you can think of is in this kit. Down the front of the arm, here we have his bicep. There's some pistons up in there that you can see right there. Down here we have the nice chrome silver and probably one of my favorite parts of this whole kit is this piece here with the chains and the pulley belt and the pulleys and everything like that. It's so impressive. Moving along here to the side, as you can see we have all of that detail and like I said, everything in here is a separate piece, which is just mind blowing. And down here we have the hands. And speaking of the hands, they are fully articulated. Every finger joint is a separate piece. They are on a swivel actually at the base. If this thing will focus at the base. And like I said, everything is an articulated joint. So you get a lot of posability out of this hand. It's actually on a slider. So it's a sliding ball joint. It's on a ball joint down there. So you can actually slide the wrist down. And as you can see, you can get some wrist bend and rotation since it is on a ball joint. So for the arm articulation, I'm actually gonna show part of the articulation while it's on the kit and part of the articulation while it's off the kit, because I think the arm bend will be easier to show you with it just in my hands. And I'll be able to actually really show you guys what's happening. So as far as up here, the arm can actually do a full 360 as you can see there. Here we can actually see that it actually can have a rotating joint up here at the, I guess, shoulder. So it makes it where he can actually reach in front of his body like so. And there's a little collar piece here in right there, if you can see it. And what that is, is just a, basically, it's for aesthetics, really. It's just a little collar piece to fill that space in. And me personally, I like the filled in look more, but it does hinder the bicep rotation just a little bit. So you actually get an alternate piece. You can actually put this piece on, which is basically just that piece cut in half. And it goes in the back side. And if you wanted him to have a little bit more bicep rotation, you can actually just change that out and make that happen. And as far as the shoulder itself goes, the shoulder actually is on a like a hinge. So it can actually hinge up and out of the way to accommodate for the arm to be able to move up. And as you can see, you can get slightly over 90 degrees of lateral movement on the arm. And if you drop it back down here, you can see that this door piece with the smokestack on it is actually on a double ball joint. 
So there's a ball joint going into this piece and one in the back of the stack. And this thing can move all around, as you can see, here we go, the ball joint there. And it can move all around and do all the things that you really want it to do because of the ball joints. And as far as the rest of the articulation for the arm, like I said before, I took the arm off and now you can actually see all of that nice detail that's up on the inside of the shoulder and then on the inside of the arm just to show you again all of this amazing detail all these little pieces everything i mean it's just astounding to look at but the articulation on this the first thing you're going to want to do for the knee there i'm sorry elbow bend is to move this piece down because if you don't it will end up clashing with the bicep and as you can see here, when we first start to move it, there is a sliding bit there. So it slides along this rail here, keeps everything looking really nice and filled in. And as you can already see here, it actually shows a lot of this nice new detail that was hidden before. And this is, you know, in that chrome silver it's really, really, really pretty. And it also, like I said before, keeps everything nice and filled in and makes it look not hollow at all. And then what will happen up here is the bicep will actually pop in on that piston. It's hard to keep this in focus. And as you can see, you can get well over 90 degrees of bend here at the elbow. What an impressive arm bend that this is. There's so many mechanical bits that's working in unison with each other to make this happen. And here you can see that fully extended chrome silver bit here at the base. Now, I will say when you go back straight, you're gonna want to kind of push on this area here but also this bicep has a really bad habit of getting stuck in there. So you're going to have to kind of like help it out a little bit, as you can see there, but it will come out. It just kind of gets stuck pretty much every time that I do it. Your copy may be a little different, but that is something to just to keep an eye out for. And then of course you want to push this back down and we have the arm back in the normal position. So moving our way down, to the waist area, here we have, as you can see, a really nice shiny waist. Most of the pieces on the waist are done in silver. You have a little bit of blue picked out here. This little piece here can actually move back and forth to accommodate for the uh, swivel up here. Speaking of the swivel, if you lift up Optimus's waist just a little bit, you can actually get more twist here at the waist of course it does kind of clash eventually with the other parts of the waist but those can actually move out of the way as you can see here these are actually on ball joints actually most of this is actually on ball joints so this can actually move up and out of the way the side skirts here can actually move outwards because they're actually connected to the rear skirts via that connection there as you can see they are also on ball joints so they can move around as you can see here this is what the inside looks like and as you can see it's just a ball joint connection right there and on the back side we have butt flaps <laughs> so basically they can move down because they're actually on a swivel up top and they can move up and down now, as you can see here, with those side skirts out of the way, he can actually get even more twist there. You can also get side to side on a very squeaky joint. And the last feature that actually segues into the legs to show off of the waist is actually these dropping hips. So as you can see there, it's hard to see, but there is a dropping mechanism, just like you see on a lot of uh, real grades and even some master grades nowadays. They have those dropping hips to make it where he can actually move his legs even further. So while we have the legs down here in this position, it's a perfect way to show off all of the leg function here. Of course, you have forward and back here. You do have thigh rotation. And the legs can actually do something pretty neat that I'll show off in a second. But first we're gonna go back. As you can see, he can go back about that far. He can go out and do basically the splits. 
And going forward is where we run into one of the first amazing pieces of ingenuity in these legs. So as you can see, if you just swivel forward, you get a bit, you can, you can kind of, it looks like he's kicking a little soccer ball or something, but the sides of the legs, actually the tops of the thighs will actually expand and show off even more detail. As you can see, this nice detailed chain bit comes out on the back side. It's got some piston details up in there and all of that is not exposed when he has his legs straight up. And so that is really nice that they actually have that mechanism, just like the arms. It's got just mechanisms all through it that make the articulation out of this world for this kit. Bending at the knee, as you can see, that top armor, a lot like a lot of the master grades and real grades of this time, will slide down, of course, revealing even more detail. And then whenever you go to bend the knee, this part here, which is actually spring loaded, where my finger is here, will actually compress down and allow for you to get one very nice deep knee bend. I mean, look at that. As bulky as these legs are, it can get such a knee bend. And as of course you can see here on the front, everything is filled in. There's nothing left hollow in this kit. As you can see here, all of that nice detail on the inside of the legs. You can see the coilovers here. I mean, just every inch of this kit is decked out in detail. And if we move down here, now you can only do this, I believe, once the legs are um, bent. But if you push up on this panel down here, you can actually open the vents on the legs, which is really, really cool. It's a nice extra piece of articulation that I would have never thought of that they actually instilled in this kit, and that is amazing. So once we actually put the leg back, so as you pull up, when you straighten the leg, it will automatically shut those louvers. And I think that's amazing, that's so cool. So just like the arms, the legs are filled with just as much linkage. So everything mechanical in here affects down here, which then in turn affects down here. It's just mind blowing. Also too, to note the wheels do spin on the sides here. And the feet are very impressive, just like the rest of this kit is, but there are some piston in work here. So as you can see, you do get some downward ankle tiltage there, and those pistons will actually allow it to go even further. So there's piston connections from here to here, which in turn connects to these pistons, which goes up into the leg. So that is very impressive. So you can get some nice deep movement there. The toe is on another swivel here at the front and these armor bits will actually move out of the way to accommodate and there is a piston up in there it's really hard to see but there is a piston up in there that assists with that whole movement there and of course to top things off you do get some nice ankle tiltage so just like with the arm i wanted to take the leg off so that we can really appreciate all of the fine detail that is in this leg. And of course I didn't show the bottom of the foot earlier. This side says Yolo Park and on the other foot it actually says Hasbro 2022. Looking up the side here, we have, you know, coilovers and all sorts of sprockets and, and just gears and all sorts of just awesome detail and as you can see that inner thigh just packed full of like this looks like some kind of fuel filter i mean it's just so much the coil over up here of course here we have the top of that piston that's hidden behind that part i mean it's just astounding the gas tank here on the side and to show off that bend one more time we have sliding mechanism here in turn here pushes this piece in which is <laughs> absolutely 
awesome. I love the fact that it can do that. And also this piece here can move up and down. And of course, what would Optimus Prime be without his Ion Blaster? So here we have the Ion Blaster. It is all done in one color, which I do kind of wish that we could have gotten a little bit of a color separation on this. But if you're intending to paint this, of course, there are plenty of options the way you want to do it. But, you know, in every series so far, his blaster's basically been one color, so I'm not really mad at it. But as you can see, it's done in this really nice gunmetal color. It's loads of detail. There's actually more parts on this gun than I really thought there was going to be. As you can see here, we have like a little bayonet looking deal here on the front. The barrel, all done very, very nicely. And up here, we have kind of a scope. Moving up, we have another scope, which actually does something. We'll go over that in a second. And here on the bottom, you can see a little bit of detail there. The magazine is able to be unloaded. And if you wanted to, you could actually sculpt and put like a little bullet up there. That would be really cool. And you can put that back in, of course. And this gun, of course, has a gimmick. And whenever you slide the handle, as you can see here, back, Speaking of the handle, very nice and detailed. Slide it back, it actually pops up the scope in the back. So that's a really neat little piece of articulation that once again, they didn't have to put into the gun, but they did. And it's very, very, very awesome that they did. So once you have this back, that in turn makes it where you can actually get this little trap door in the back. Now it can be a little hard to get open, but you can open this trap door and this little piece here will just flip out and you can press it up against here, close the hatch back up, and this gives you your peg for the hand. So if we bring Optimus in here, as you can see, he does have a peg or a hole in the middle of his palm. And of course, if you've kind of built any kind of modern uh, figure with hands, most of them have this kind of configuration and of course as you can see the peg is on both sides so you can hold this in the left or the right hand but you just kind of get it in place and peg it into the arm as such the articulated fingers make it where he can actually grip the gun really well you can even put the finger up in the trigger there now this comes to one of the things that I wish was a little bit better in this kit, and that is the fact that he cannot hold his weapon. Of course, you can push the fist back up in there, and that will stabilize the gun in the hand, so the hand and wrist can hold it. But, as you can see, these shoulders just cannot do it. So I wish that there was like some sort of ratchet or something that they could put up in the uh, shoulder to make it where he can actually hold that. But sadly he cannot. But I mean, if you get him in a pose, uh, maybe with his arm bent and stuff like that, you can kind of give the illusion. But as far as him holding it straight out in a really nice iconic, you know, shooting pose, it's probably not going to happen. Now, you could probably modify it if you wanted to, but as is, it's just not going to happen. And the last weapon to show off is this gigantic axe. I mean, when I say gigantic, it fits in my hand like a hatchet. <laughs> so this thing is massive. That being said, as with the blaster, this being heavier than the blaster, he cannot hold this up very well, but you can still get him in some really cool poses. You can have it slung over his shoulder, stuff like that. So there are poses you can get with this that still make it look amazing. And just like the blaster, it is done in all one color, which, I, you know, there are possibilities to get more paint apps on this. So like, say, the pieces up here, plenty of details up in here that you can actually pick out and paint if you wanted to. I mean, this just looks like an engine inside there, which is absolutely awesome. Of course, this is supposed to be the Energon Axe. Uh, 
you know, you could probably paint the blade like an orange color and make it into an Energon axe, but as of right now, it's kind of not. And it says in the manual that they actually designed this inspired by the axe that Optimus had in the Transformers movie number three. So, you know, take that with what you will. I think it's a really cool looking axe. And of course, here we have the peg and it is actually only on one side so he can only hold this in his left hand i believe and if you don't like the look down here of the peg being on there you can actually swap that piece out for just a straight standard look so you can have a nice sleek looking handle there and before getting to the main show, which is inside his chest, I did want to quickly go over again that this does come with some water slides. It actually comes with two different sets, so you can either pick this set or this set or mix, mix match as you like. But these pieces here, these little symbols, they're actually supposed to go down here on each wrist. And of course, the other is the Autobot logo to replace the Autobot logo that is up on the shoulders currently if you decide to paint this kit. And of course, I saved the best for last and the best being the opening chest gimmick of this kit to reveal the Matrix of Leadership. So to do so, of course, all you do is open the chest, which are pegged in and they hold in rather well, which is good. They're not flopping around. And what you're going to want to do is to actually open these up fully is push towards the center of the chest because they're on a swivel back here and then open as you can see this swivel here same thing on the other side push towards the center of the chest and open up and that will reveal the inside of the chest here and that will also make it where you prevent breaking the doors of this as you can see already there are tons of detail especially up in here around the matrix so what you're going to want to do is actually utilize that crunch just a little bit it makes it a little easier to get this piece loose because what you want to do is pop this piece down as you can see it just pops down then you can ab crunch back up and it will actually pull this back up with it then you're going to want to take this piece here fold down fold this piece up and then that will in turn push in to the body like so and voila, here we have the Matrix of Leadership, all shown, and, and it's amazing. All the silver on this kit is actually painted silver. Uh, the runners themselves are white and gray. I believe in the unboxing, I mistakenly said that the silver wasn't the paint part, so to correct myself, this silver is the paint part. But taking a look here at the matrix, as you can see, there are actually three clear blue pieces, one here, one here, and one here, and it is so pretty. Now, you can, if you want to, take like a gold paint marker or paint whatever color you want, really, but in that center of the uh, matrix to make it really accurate. But the fact that they even put a matrix in this is amazing uh they didn't have to uh you know we don't we haven't seen that yet from this prime so the fact that they took it upon themselves to incorporate this into this kit is just astounding now you can remove this matrix it does take a little bit of doing because it is pegged in via this peg in the back but as I have it out, we can actually take an even closer look. I mean, look at all that detail around the center, over to the sides. I mean, this thing is gorgeous. And if you really wanted to, you could probably drill a hole in the back and put an LED and drill a hole there and actually have the matrix lit up in his uh, chest as well as his, his eyes, if you wanted to. And with the matrix out of the way, here we have a good look at what it looks like behind the matrix. And one other point of articulation, I'm not really sure what these are for. If you guys know in the comments, please let me know. But these pieces here swivel out. And for the life of me, I can't figure out why. So if you guys know, let me know. Now, same as whenever we were opening this up, 
applies to whenever you are closing it. I find utilizing that ab crunch aids very well in getting this piece here back up in there. So what we're gonna do is we're going to grab and pull this piece out. It can be a little hard to do. Be sure to be careful. As I stated before, this is a Plamo kit and you can break things if you're not careful. But we're gonna put this back up where it was. Then we are going to utilize that ab crunch and be able to tuck this piece back behind that piece there and then bring it back up. What I've noticed is if you don't utilize the ab crunch, it's very hard to get this piece behind this piece here without a lot of uh, rubbing. So when you utilize the ab crunch, it allows you to get it behind there without ever touching this piece. And then of course you just, you know, get the chest all closed up and there we go. And to finish this review off right, there was only one size comparison that I could think of doing, and that of course is the granddaddy of all Gundams, the RX-78 Perfect Grade Unleashed. And as you can see, he is perfect grade size. I mean, he, pound for pound, is just as big as the granddaddy himself. These guys are massive. So just in case you're wondering how big Optimus is, here you go. All right guys, that's gonna do it for this review. For final thoughts on this kit, this is an outstanding kit. It is essentially a perfect grade Optimus Prime and it literally looks like it jumped off the movie screen. The amount of detail is mind blowing and this is easily the best looking out of box build that I've ever built. Like I said before, 98% of these parts are undergated, so it's easy to clean up, and I really didn't have any fitment issues, so if you wanted to paint this kit as you went, or like as you built, you wouldn't have any problems. The only gripes I have about the kit is I wish the head articulation was a little bit better. I wish that there was actually a ball joint like up in the head as well as in the neck so that you can get a little bit more movement out of that. Other than that, I really didn't have any other gripes? Uh, I mean, maybe the shoulder connections, uh, some ratchets up in there so that he can actually hold his weapon forward, but those are things, since this is a Plamo kit, that you could modify yourself if you wanted to and make it happen. But other than those minor things, this thing was absolutely astonishing. So if you would like to get your hands on one of these primes for your own, you can head over to usagundamstore.com where you can pre-order yours today. As always guys, thanks for watching this review and a like and subscribe would always be appreciated and I will see you in the next one.